Yo dog, Candy Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up with another painting tutorial on the literal best of all days. On this Friday, we're going to be doing something we've never done before. We're going to be doing a Contemptor Pattern Dreadnought, painted Emperor's Children. So it's kind of a two-parter there. We've painted purple before, you've seen it. But this is going to be an Imperial Purple. This isn't going to be like all the tentacle organic purples. This is going to be a clean Imperial paint job. So we're going to break this video into two parts. Part one, what you're about to watch, is three colors. Get it to the tournament. This is essentially tournament standard. This is, you know, not like demonized three color minimum. It's not, I promise you, this isn't the minimum you could do. But this is like kind of a no-nonsense approach to uh, painting. Don't be lazy, basically, is what I'm trying to say with this video. If you ever like, oh my God, I got so many models to paint. Oh, it's so hard. I'm going to show you in these two videos how it's not actually hard. How we're going to take this Contemptor Pattern Dreadnought to the tabletop. Like you're going to be, by the end of this video, you're going to be proud to put this Contemptor Dreadnought on the table. And in part two, we're going to take it to the next level. So this kind of shows you that if you're trying to get ready for a tournament and you don't have enough time and you feel like, oh, I just don't want to paint them half fast, you will see that the difference between the painting at half fast and getting it ready for a tournament is, it isn't in spite of each other. One of them just leads to the other. Getting it to the tournament is just the pre-stage to getting it to the next level. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get models to the tabletop and to be proud of them. Not three color minimum, not a bunch of spray paint, a bunch of bullshit. I'm talking like we're gonna put some multiple levels of technique into these and we're gonna put multiple levels of love into these. And with the right approach, It'll be classy, and you can be proud of it. I'm looking forward to part two, though, because I really hate having a model, in my opinion, that's unfinished. But I'll tell you some straight up, real honesty. When I first started this company, Next Level Painting, five years ago, this is what I offered. What you're going to see at the end of this video was the limits of my ability as a pro painter. Now, that's not the limit of my ability as a painter. It's just that when you become a professional painter, you have to find a new technique, a new place to live so that you can provide you know, quantity and quality. And I'll tell you, man, like this, this concept of Dreadnought at the end of this video is what I offered five years ago. Now I offer more. So you'll see in part two what I do now to models. We're gonna show you how to use that set, how to use the airbrush to your advantage, how to use washes to your advantage as usual. We're gonna show you how to use basing materials to your advantage. Really excited about this video. I've never done anything like it. Please check out my Patreon page. The Patreon supporters have been getting real. And I just wanna say this I'm trying to go ad free in 2016. The only way I can do that is through support on Patreon. I will literally turn the monetization button off on these YouTube videos. I'll stop it. You won't see all these ads everywhere. It'll be done. If we can get the Patreon page at $700, I will turn off all the ads and you will not see ads on Next Level Painting on YouTube. It'll be done. Thank you guys for your support. I've got a few shout outs to do here. I want to thank Ricardo, Nick, I also want to thank Chad, Mario, Jose, and of course, Wes. Thank you guys. And of course, if you haven't heard, check out thelongward.net if you want to get early exclusive access to all the battle reports, webcasts, and more. Let's jump right into it. Let's do this thing and let's start this party right with some army painter. We're talking about the tournament standard. We're going to use alien purple from army painter. And these army painters, I've really just come in clutch. And I just hit it all purple, hit it multiple thin coats, hit every nook and cranny that I could, treat it like an airbrush. We're going to jump right into the highlight. And this is an old Reaper Master Series paint. This is called Amethyst Purple. This is a great highlight purple. Using my normal uh, techniques, using a little airbrush flow improver, a little water, and you could check out our most recent video where I showed you how to hack the airbrush and utilize these things. And you can see this goes right on smooth, no speckling, no splattering. I'm using all the techniques I showed you in that previous video. And we're gonna come in here, highlight this, and we're doing something kind of different. Like I said, I'm not a scientist. I really don't know where light comes from. I don't even know what light is, you know what I'm saying? Like, how does it work? What I do is I just find areas that I want to create transitions in, and I just create the transitions. I don't really put much thought into where the light comes from. I'm not uh, I'm not a scientist, like I said. I'm not a physicist or a theoretical physicist or any of that shit. I just like the way this looks. But I do know that however I highlight it, I want to figure out where my edge highlight's gonna be later. 
So I'm kind of into not just traditional highlighting where I'm going to highlight just the top down, the Cynthia highlight, but I do like to create little radial bursts on, on certain areas. I like to imagine that like lights reflecting upward in some areas. Like if I were to imagine like what this guy's light source looked like, it'd be like a thousand lights hitting him in all little, little areas. So we've come in there and we've created all these like initial transitions. You know, we're happy with these. And that was just straight from the alien purple to the amethyst purple. Now we're going to come in and hit another a model air color. Sorry, this is not an air color. This is just model color from Vallejo. And this is violet. This is a great color. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to reestablish some of the darkest areas. You see right there? And that traditionally, that spot on the shoulder is a spot that most people would try to highlight with that like Zentheo highlight from the top down. But I've kept it dark on purpose because I'm going to do this technique later in part two of this video where I call it the dark edge highlight to help create more reflective surfaces. And I won't go into that now because next week's video, I will crack that equation here for you guys. I will, I will show you that technique. But you see though, we are getting a really fancy looking set of transitions. And he's looking nice and he's looking kind of semi-metallic. Um, he's looking just fresh and clean. And that's what I love about the airbrush. You can really do these things. And we also have multiple layers here. We have um, a major purple, then a violet, and an amethyst purple. And that's the trick to layering colors. And real quick, you saw that I pulled out the old seal coat and I'm moving right into the gun metal alloy from Vallejo Air. I seal coated it after I did all that highlighting because airbrushing is just delicate. So I like to do a quick seal coat, come back to it, and then I'll keep that, this, so that way I don't rub it off as I'm painting, because it is a very delicate process. And we're using, um, in my opinion, some of the best metallics in the game are from the Vallejo Air Series. They're just so good, because normally airbrush colors are pearlized and they have this glittery look, glitter look to them that I just fucking hate. But that's not the case here. They do a great job of making an airbrush ready metallic that doesn't look like glitter. And I'm just, and it, it applies so easily. So we're just coming in and we're just establishing, you know, nice, clean, uh, you know, paid by numbers here. We're finding all the robot parts and we're making the metal. That simple. Don't overthink it. Don't think about how you're going to dry brush it. Just go in there and try your hardest not to get that silver on the purple. But if you do, you know, just, you know, cover it up with a little bit of tape and come back in an airbrush, fix it. Or come in with your paintbrush and, you know, fix any overspill that you get it happens to the best of us man like i can't tell you how many times a stray brush stroke has ruined a nice subtle transition that's why you have to just pay attention this is where i turn my music off this is where i turn my tunes off and my audiobook off and i just pay attention because i can't afford those slashes of of silver in in the wrong area and you can see he's already <laughs> looking basically like a robot this guy right now is coming along nice I just want to admire him. The transitions look fresh. I love the excitement. I just, like I said, I love the excitement of multiple layers of colors using a violet, a purple, and an MSS burst of purple. Molten bronze. This is an ancient Chinese uh, trick from Next Level Painting. This is a classic gold equivalent. Like I've said it a hundred times, like, um, don't overthink gold. Basically, look at bronze as dark gold. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't like, oh, it's not gold. Yo, it's gold, son. It's dark gold. So I love Molten Bronze from the Privateer Press line because it is just so good. The P3 formula is so good. These are one of some of my favorite paints. I basically only use my favorite paints in these videos. So we're going to come on here and we're going to paint every other ornament on this guy gold. Because we are we are doing the 30K Empress Children, which are predominantly fresh-ass royal purples and gold. They have a really good looking color scheme. They throw a little bit of white in there um, as they're a breakup color. I just love them. I love painting purple, obviously. And this is like our attempt at painting a more imperial purple. This is not going to, we're not going to be leaning on any weathering effects. We're going to do this as clean and well oiled of a machine as possible. Like I said, this is still paint by numbers mode. Be as careful as you can. Come in here. Use, you know, use a little water to thin out the, uh, the, the P3 paints. Um, but not, a, but don't go crazy with the water. They actually have great coverage. And with a little bit of water, they will spread out very far. You will get a lot out of them. That's why they're one of my favorite paints. They have great pigments, great colors, great primary and secondary colors, and they last literally forever, especially if you use them in your airbrush and you thin them out, which again, in our most recent video where I hack the airbrush, I show you how to use Privateer Press's uh, paints in the airbrush. So he's coming along well. 
He's basically almost there. He's almost tournament standard right there. He's almost ready to go. We just got to do a few more details. And then, of course, we got to go into an ancient Chinese technique as well, which is going to be washing. Before we get into washing, we're going to do a little bit of crisp, clean whites. We're going to be using uh, a little arcane blue, mix a little white. Use whatever white you want. White's one of those colors that just whatever your preference is. So I'm using a little arcane blue, mixed in with a little bit of white. And I'm going to start building up um, a little bit of a shade to this little banner across his chest. And then I'm going to just blend it in to pure white. Going for that really unnaturally clean white versus like the weathered parchment. Because it just seems to me that that's kind of the white that... Uh, the Everest children embrace. They, they're all about the clean whites, not the dirty, dingy whites. It is um, a wet blend technique. I've shown it a few times in a few videos. Basically, there's no way to explain this outside of um, you're blending it using water and two different colors together. If you uh, have been painting for any amount of time, this is a technique you've probably stumbled into all on your own. But later I will do a video. There he is. He, I mean, like, he is almost there. Like, you could basically put this guy in a base, put him on a table, and people would be okay with it. But we're going to take it to that next level of tabletop ready. We're using, we're, I'm really into the Vallejo washes right now. I used to say GW had the best washes in the game. And don't get me wrong, uh, GW has great washes. But I don't like how they separate, and they're really thin. Um, and the Vallejo washes are really thick, so you can kind of thin them as you go with just water. And I'm just going to go in here. And give it a semi, you know, medium level thick, thin uh, coat of this black wash on every metal that we just did. And the trick here is to keep manipulating the wash into all the areas you want without letting it pull up in any flat surfaces. And when you start doing these pieces of trim that are near purple, very carefully apply it to that area between the gold trim and the purple. So you can kind of create a little bit of a dark line that creates contrast between the trim and the purple but be but pay attention to it you don't want to go crazy with it you don't want to ruin the purple it's just one of my tricks it helps create that lo that level of contrast and you can see like i mean this is instantaneously making the gold more interesting you can't even argue with that like how good it looks now we're going to just keep moving along being patient don't fling your wash around because it, you will you it will splatter onto your beautiful purples and that is a bitch it happened to me about three times during the recording of this video it was super annoying we're gonna hit his chest piece uh you can see like just how fast it makes it look real all of a sudden it's an antiqued uh well-maintained but very ancient piece of metal and there it is all the wash is dry and you essentially have a tournament ready piece now if you put that on the table no one will give you a hard time but we're going to take it one step further in this video i'm going to show you really quickly how to take this thing to one next degree above this we're going back we're going to use some of the citadel texture paints i did a whole tutorial on this so don't hesitate to check that tutorial out where i go in more detail what i'm showing you here is a really super easy way to put another air another level on the base I just took a cork, I'm cutting a piece off the cork, cutting that piece in half. I'm gonna take a good sharp exacto knife and I'm just gonna shave it up to be a rock very quickly. Because you'll notice most tournaments have a rubric before you go to them. They'll say uh, three colors, check mark. Uh, do you have uh, details presented like eyes and banners? Check. Are there um, advanced techniques used here, you know, like highlighting or this or that? Check. Uh, did he use clean washes and dry brushing technique? You know, stuff like that. And one of them is going to be how the model's based. And then the next check mark might be do they present multiple levels on the base, multiple flocking techniques. So by taking this piece of cork, chopping it up, making it look real quick. And this is all real time, dog. I literally just did this this fast. And we're going to take this rock, slice it up, make it look kind of interesting, throw some grooves in it, some gashes in it, create something interesting. And also save those little pieces of cork that are falling off because we're going to use those uh, a little bit later. Take this piece of cork. When you're ready, when you believe it looks enough like a rock that you're happy, uh, it'll be ready to glue to the base, of course. But I like to do these little, like, cuts in it. Like, I like to draw a couple slashes in the rock. Like, you know, what you know, go lateral, then, you know, slash against it. And it really does kind of sell the rock to me. It's just 
we've all we all have our little things and I definitely have a certain way I like my rocks that kind of look like Dragon Ball Z uh, TV show rocks so boom big old glob of glue on the base stick that big ass rock right there in the front so everyone can see it when they come by to judge it obviously let it dry but now you're gonna see what we're gonna do with those other pieces of cork so you see like I didn't get it perfectly level shit happens that's why I didn't overthink it because I knew that I had a backup plan I'm gonna start shoving some of these little slices of cork into that area right there that's not level and, and just stick it to that glue that's spilling out everywhere this is basically just a good use of extra hobby supplies if you drink any wine at home or anything just always save the corks you never know when you might need them in a pinch like this just manipulate it with your exacto knife you, I even find using two exacto knives is kind of handy with some of this technique and you're gonna see right here I just keep stabbing these little corks throwing a little bit of glue on them find an area near the base of this big rock and now you can start stacking them up it's real easy man like this is literally fun super simple nothing about this is complicated this is just pure hobby cracking and this is also like I said a good solid approach to making a model that we spent relatively little amount of time on that we wanted to take to a tournament be a little bit more interesting now we're gonna bust out that textured paint glob it on the base like heavy you can see you even got a little piece of cork in there no big deal and then we're gonna take a paintbrush and we're just gonna spread it around and kind of lump it up and make sure it's nice and textured we're gonna you know smooth it out but also like you know ripple it we want it to be kind of mounted up because this is a bigger model I want the base to be a little bit more interesting and we're gonna also completely cover that rock with this textured paint at first I thought about leaving the rock uh, lock rock alone but I was like you know what man I want to see what happens when I completely cover the rock in textured paint. See how I see how it treats those seams and all those slices we just put into it. So I've never done this before. This is uh, my first time. So <laughs> luckily it kind of worked out. So I could I could film it and show you guys how to take this Contemptor Dreadnought from primer to a tournament in easily a solid afternoon of work. Like this is not a this is not a long process. This you know this this only took a couple hours. And obviously, like I said, this is not what I would sell somebody. I'll show you that in, in the second video. And there it is, completely covered in the texture paint. We're gonna set this in front of our floor fan. We're gonna let it dry for about 45 minutes. And then we're gonna pull out that Vallejo black again. And we're gonna wash this base. And this is a great wash for this base. And we're going on unthinned. We're not using any water to thin it out. We're going on super thick here. And this, it dries kind of weird when it's this thick, but it's kind of perfect for bases in my opinion. So I'm gonna mound the wash up and then I'm gonna just start moving the base around and just pulling the wash where it needs to go. Make sure I get maximum coverage. And this is essentially transforming the gray of this base into black. And then we're gonna dry brush it, use whatever dry brush color you want. I use a bone dry brush. Use whatever flocking material you want. I like to use tufts of grass from Gamers Grass. And you see right here, there is. That right there only took a few hours to paint. That took that was a solid afternoon of work. We didn't go crazy here, and this is ready for the tournament. Stay tuned for next week when we take this Contemptor Dreadnought to the next level, and it'll be a showpiece once we're done. Thanks for watching. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on the longward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.